hey guys welcome back to my channel so today's video you guys are coming to clinical with me virtually of course um, so today I have maternity simulation and adult and elder so you know just gotta make sure I'm on mute if my video is off because I could be embarrassed real quick but um, I have class well clinical from 10 12:45 and from 2 to 5 so this is my on-campus clinical and so you know I'm gonna take you guys along a day in the life of an online student via quarantine you know zoom university Good morning, everyone. You may start showing your <laughs> it's getting started so let's get into it hunting actually stops the woman wanting to push well it dissuades the woman wanting to push it reduces that urge that is physiological because once that baby's head hits the perineum and hits the lower pelvic floor it is a natural reflex for the woman wanting to push this stage is important now to check whether the cord is around the baby's neck so with one finger I just check around the neck and I'm glad to say on this occasion there is no umbilical cord but if there was all one would have to do is slip the umbilical cord over the head or in anticipation of our trolley if the cord was too tight we would have to clamp it on two sides and then cut the cord. It's anyway, <clears throat> Well, one reason is like by doing the maneuver, you'll be able to properly assess where the fetal heart rate is and, you know, not just aimlessly put it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Very good, Ashley. Um, we want to, when we want to check the baby's fetal heart, we want to find the back because the back is where we can accurately or we can hear the fetal heart um, strongly. Very good. Let's go with Ashley. Um, what is your response related to additional interventions for the client? Um, I would say encourage use of donut cushion. Okay, so encourage use of donut. Okay. You can buy a donut cushion. How will this help? I read that donut cushions are not good for you. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and the baby's head is engaged. Okay, so um, based on the assessment, where would you um, assess for the fetal heart rate? The right lower quadrant. Right lower quadrant. Okay. So pretty much our clinical consists of just back and forth of discussion and answering questions and she picks on different people to see if we have the right answer or not. And so that's pretty much what you guys are seeing. If this was in person and not remote via Zoom, we would, you know, kind of obviously be more hands on and interactive. But this is kind of what we're doing now being in quarantine and, you know, it works for now. Okay guys, so that was my first maternity clinical and um, it started at 10 and it was supposed to end at 12.45. It is like 1.10 or 115, and I have another clinical starting at 2 so I'm a little like drained. Like I'm not annoyed because I understand it's the first clinical and she was just trying to, you know, get adjusted to things. So um, it happens. It runs over. So I'm just going to try to hurry up and eat something before my 2 p.m. on campus clinical for adult and elder. And that's from 2 to 5. So that's another three hours. So ideally in total today, I would have been in clinical on campus setting um, for six hours. Um... So yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys in Adult and Elder. Even more anxious. Or okay guys, so the setup of this class is pretty much identical to all the other ones. So it's the same thing with maternity. We kind of have open discussion prior to our simulation, our virtual simulation with the patient. And so we kind of just talk some scenarios out and then we'll meet up afterwards after we've done our clinical simulation. And all of these can lead to what event? Do you want like a code? Or... Yeah, exactly. Oh. You could code. 
And so what else do we have to make sure this patient's transported with them? So our patient is Wilfred Price. He's an 80-year-old male who presented to the ER with shortness of breath, and he has a history of COPD. At the moment, he doesn't have any no-known drug allergies. I don't have any blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, oxygen level, um, O2 sat rather, and temperature. So these are, you know, I, I, this is a new admission. <clears throat> so obviously I already know off the bat that that's something that I'm going to have to assess for. And so, you know, I already have his name here. We have the gender identity as male. Um, you know, they even have the assigned at birth so that we can acknowledge, you know, any of any people from the LGBTQ community as well as, you know, the pronouns that he wants to be addressed by. And now we see that the allergies are penicillin and he's a full cold status. So the reason for admission is he was admitted to the ER for initial treatment of an acute exacerbation of COPD. So he already has COPD and he's coming in with shortness of breath. So I'm not really surprised by that because he, you know, has COPD. So it seems as if there's some sort of a flare up that we're going to be addressing. And, you know, recommendation, if there, there was a previous nurse before, they would recommend to us, hey, you know, this is something that you should do, like monitor their vitals or see their O2 stat level and things like that. So <clears throat> with that being said, after we get the information from our instructor, we'll go into the simulation lab and we'll, the virtual one, and we'll take care of the patient virtually, as you see here, and then go from there. I'm one of the nurses looking after you today. I understand you're feeling very short of breath. Can you tell me what's been going on? Hello there. Uh, 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 oh, it's my chest. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm struggling uh, to breathe. Okay, so at this moment, I'm just gonna, before I start washing my hands, it's kind of hard to navigate this thing, but, um, so make sure my cursor is actually this white dot, not this mouse thing, so I washed my hands. And honestly, first thing I want to do, I don't think she can help me start vitals. I'm going to just see if I can start vitals. So I'm going to measure oxygen, sat, and heart rate, just so I can see what's going on. As you see, the blue hands are doing that right now. In the meantime, let's try to communicate. You can record your vitals on the early warning system chart on the computer at any time. Mm. Can you tell me about what's brought you in today? I've uh, been getting uh, uh, more short uh, breath for a few days now. Okay, so this patient has COPD. If we look at the vital signs, O2 stat is 84%. Heart rate is going up to 100. I'm also going to see if I can assess the blood pressure and it is 105 over 72 so as blood of right now my main is concern taken, is you can recheck the patient's blood pressure at any time using the monitor thank you you know so as of right now my main concern is the o2 stat it's 82 percent normal range for anyone with copd is like 88 to 92 so that's extremely low so we're gonna see you know some of the protocols that we can do i'm just gonna check the medical record first before i do anything um oh before I even do or give anything, I just want to make sure if they have any allergies very important. Are you allergic to anything? Oh, oh just, just uh, cats. Uh, just cats. Okay, so no medication. They uh, make me, uh, they make me wee wheezy. So, in looking in the patient's medical record, um, you know, we see the condition COPD, hypertension, osteo osteoarthritis. Um, if I click again, I see the medication list. We can kind of see what he's normally taking. Um, let me use my pen here. Amlodipine, um, probably wouldn't give that, but albuterol will definitely give to help with the breathing. Um, some form of a steroid. Um, so let me also look at the guideline for COPD. And you see here that oxygen normally is 88 to 92, I know it's a little small. 
nebulizer you can give uh, five milligrams and you can give it back to back three times if anything steroid 30 milligrams oral so first thing um, I want to honestly do is give oxygen so I'm gonna give a simple face mask six liters and as you see the nurse is gonna go ahead and give that to the patient so in the meantime, before I call anybody in this handy dandy phone to help me out, I'm gonna go ahead and take some blood tests and I'm going to take ABGs to let me know kind of what's going on. Why am I so high? That's what I'm telling you, this thing is so hard to navigate. There we go. Let's look at the vitals. Okay, so with the mask on, as you see, the O2, has already gone up and it's at 89, but the heart rate is honestly a little fast. Um, I'll make sure that's taken to the blood gas machine immediately. So I wanna kind of also do some exams when I take a respiratory exam. And obviously I wanna assess the air airway, but for the sake of this video, I want you guys to hear his lung sounds. And the talking that you hear in the back is actually like within this simulation. Like, as you know, this is the ER, so the you're gonna hear. Results are back. You're on the desk. Thank you. You're gonna hear a lot of like background noise, so that's part of the simulation. And um, she just told me that the ABG results are back. So luckily it gives the normal range over on this side. So, you know, his pH is 7.29. Obviously he's very acidic because it's below the normal. Um, his CO2 is 47, but as you see, normal is 35 to 45. So he is kind of holding on to that CO2 at the moment, which is expected because he has COPD, but we want to help to, you know, to help that. So one of the things that I do want to give him is albuterol. Albuterol, five milligrams as per the uh, guidelines. This simulation is a little different. Normally it would be doctor's orders, but it's a little different. Okay guys, that's really just about it. Honestly, um, it was a super long day, so I kind of forgot to do an outro, but there's nothing else besides me finishing this simulation. We went back to discuss and, you know, talked about what were our tough points and what we could have done better um, as far as taking care of the patient. And so that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I always say, if you're gonna do something, make sure you do it gracefully. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, like what do you think about this uh zoom university you know quarantine version of clinicals kind of crazy but you know one day it'll get back to normal next semester for me so this is just what it is in the meantime but thank you guys for watching bye